she's a moon in my shine, the whiskey in the water. Well, he made quite a splash when he debuted back in 2013. Everyone wanting to know who is the guy behind those songs and videos. I'm Suzanne Alexander. Welcome to On the Record. We're sitting down with Tyler Farr. Good to have you here. Good to see you. You know, listen, first of all, I have to say congratulations. We just saw, of course, Redneck Crazy in that video. Just what, double platinum? I saw you just got that double platinum. Hard to believe. 2013, <laughs> man. That's, I'm uh... getting old. That's, that's what double platinum <laughs> Is means. Is that what it means? It means I'm about to turn 40 this year. You know, so. That was such a big, impactful song. Did you... Do you have any idea that it would have hit so hard? Because it was so different, I think, to hear a guy singing that a, a song of being angry, having revenge. It was a, a lot of that, and it was direct. Oh, it stirred up yeah. some stuff. <laughs> um, that was my, um, I'm, I've never been a safe person. Mm -hmm. And just, hey, we'll just be a top skimmer. and mm -hmm. Be subtle, yeah. Subtle and see, and, you know, see what happens, so... That was my, I pointed the bat at the fence and swung the hell out of the thing, you know, and that's what I did on that song. I, that was not my first single. A lot of people think it was. Right. Hot Mess was my first single. She my hot mess in a sundress. Got my heart beating out of my chest. Don't it maybe made it to 50 something. And then uh, Hello Goodbye, which I thought was a no brainer. It's one of my favorite songs I've ever wrote. Hello, Fifty-three, and I, I mean, my manager called me, and I remember it. It was around Thanksgiving. I was in Missouri uh, for the holidays, and uh, I was pretty pissed. And I that these songs just weren't taking they, off they like just, you thought no. they would, and uh, you thought yeah. they should, yeah. And I didn't know. I mean, I, I just got my first record deal, my first publishing deal, mm -hmm. so I'm just hanging on for dear life, and I don't know what I'm doing, right. but I know what a good song is, a great song is. And I said, we need to put this song out, Redneck Crazy. And I'm and Sony Records, they were terif terrified <laughs> of it for good reason. I and say, I knew why. So. I said, listen, yeah. just trust me. Like, and they, you know, my staff over there and my my team, they were, they believed in me. Um, you know, back when people used to take chances on artists, mm -hmm. and thank God they did on me. And mm -hmm. I said, just trust me. That's we're going to get this thing. You think you could release that song today? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I don't know. I, but it was, it, you know, it resonated it with, uh, yeah. you know, the folks that are watching this right now, you know, that it's just real life, like, mm -hmm. and those are the songs that me and you love. Right. You didn't have to watch yourself. You didn't have no. to censor yourself. It's like, oh, man, yeah. can't get upset that yeah. they're. Wife or girlfriend is right. This was real life. Hooking yeah. up with someone that well, of course they right. did. That's why Red Akins wrote "That Ain't My Truth" right. and sang that. It's a, it's just a true song, and I've kind of stuck to that okay. throughout my career. Just, yeah, I want to get a little background on you for people who may not know. And, and uh, you know, I know Missouri kid, right? Grew up and uh, talk about as a child what you were like. And did you have siblings too? It's just you. I do. I have two younger uh, sisters. One was a freshman when I was a senior in high school. My half sister Madison, she's a, uh, gosh, she's probably eight years younger than me. But yeah, I grew up in Garden City, Missouri. It's about population twelve hundred. It's a small little farming town about an hour south of Kansas City. Did you um, have dreams or was family musical at all or? Yeah, my dad was the last person to make all state choir at my high school before me. So 20 years later. You were following in his footsteps and. I made all state choir and national. And, Is that and how it, you became, people may not know, classically trained in, in opera, it was through school? And I played football and baseball and I wasn't like outstanding going to the NFL on anything, but mm. I could kind of pick a little bit of everything up. Mm -hmm. I was kind of one of those kids, and but my mom, because I sang as soon as I came straight out the womb, you know, and <laughs> and she got me into classical voice lessons um, with Debbie Mills when I was probably around 12, 13. This was a school teacher? Or she was uh, one of the best vocal coaches in the state, wow. in my, and she lived about 20 minutes. Uh, North of us in Harrisonville. So what was it like? Here you are. You're a kid in Missouri, a farming town. You're playing football. You're playing sports. I was an oddball. Singing choir and 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 being trained I mean, as I an opera singer. I was singing the national anthem and 
full shoulder shoulder pads, like, <laughs> and then running the football, you don't think them jokers wanted to smear the hell out of me. You're wrong. <laughs> um, so it was, the, you know, my butt, I got some slack from my butt, but I didn't get too much because yeah. I could sing good. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you're pretty, pretty freaking good. So it was great that you can kind of walk both sides of that line. And really, I think, does it make you tougher, stronger, knowing that you, when you're well-rounded like that? I don't know if well-rounded is how I would describe <laughs> myself, but it, it, I just enjoyed anything that had to do with music. Yeah. Always did. You know, people have no idea what I listen to in my truck when I'm driving around. It could be um, rap, it could be Andre Bocelli to Michael Bolton to uh, Vince Gill to yeah. Earl Thomas Conley. To, I just love music, and it's always been something uh, singing-wise, vocally-wise, that has came easy to me, mm. and I'm fortunate for that. When did you get bit by the country music bug? When was that kind of in your mind where, hey, that's what I want to sing like? That was about the age of 16. You don't know stuff when you're a kid. You don't really know what's happening until you get older. And you're like, oh, that's what was going on. And my mom was going to Nashville, and I think she was kind of trying to make it like as an artist or like trying to sing. And Were you aware of that, that your mom had aspirations? Or really? Now I do, yeah. but I remember playing her, playing us a music video that she recorded in Nashville. And, and you know, I'm just chasing girls and playing football <laughs> and singing classical music. Right, wasn't all <laughs> the your normal radar. stuff. Right, you know? right. And she came home, you know, and um, she said, I've got a man I want you to meet. He's, his name's Dwayne Phillips. He plays guitar with George Jones. And I'm like, George Jones, that maybe heard that name. I wasn't like super familiar with it. Well, she ends up marrying him and I go on the road with him for an entire summer. So you're out with George Jones. On the Jones Boys bus, there was a blood stain still on that bus from me because Scott Coney grabbed me by my belt loop on the back of my jeans and had me because I was... Acting out a little bit? A I little give, teenage I, rebellion? I give a little crap, yep. you know, when I was younger. <laughs> I and he feeling. had me and, was, and I smoked my face right on the couch and... and uh, Tom Killen was getting on to Scott. He's like, oh, Julie's going to kill you, my mom. And I, I had a bloody nose right so there. So you're hanging out with George Joe's bus yeah, on, on with his Yeah, babysit his band. grandkid. And, yeah. and his, people were taking pictures of his grandkids. And I'm like, this guy must be pretty, pretty big. big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's when I really, and the first time watching him sing, um, I think it was like, who's going to fill the shoes of the Grand Tour? And I was like, and I got goosebumps. Who's going to fill their shoes? Kind of been hard, but a softy at the same time, if that makes any sense. But uh, music always gets me, and I was like, that's amazing. I want to do that. I want to talk about your road to Nashville. Stay with us a lot more when we come back. We're talking with Tyler Farr, and this is On the Record. song guy walks into a bar we're sitting here in the studio with the man behind that song tyler farr this is on the record so before the break we were talking about you i mean like not every kid at 16 17 years old hanging out with george jones band touring on the road with george jones a wild wild start to where you're going to be leading off how did you make that jump from you know here you are missouri kid to really pursuing nashville and, and country music how old were you when my mom married uh, Dwayne Phillips, um, George's guitar player, and he'd played, George's actually pretty much adopted him when he was like 12. He actually did an album on my stepdad. Mm. And it was called like the Bubblegum Bandit. I mean, you can watch my stepdad sing and George had him on Porter Wagner's show. My gray skies are gone. And it, which is really cool, because I love that old stuff. And yeah. So did you have a shoe in then through George? Was he kind of... I didn't, because, you know, at that time, I graduated in 2002. So this would have been about the year 2000. George uh, was on the Cold Hard Truth Tour, which had the song Choices on it, which is one of my favorite George songs. With the choices I made. He'd gotten that Lexus wreck. He was doing something with Vestal Goodman. Um, it's amazing how much I can remember, remember long term. I can't remember where I 
drop my dip can nowadays. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's what really ignited the spark in me to like really start listening to classical, like country classic music, country yeah. music and getting into Hank Williams and Vern Gosden and, you know, uh, Earl Thomas Conley, Conway Twitty, the, all It's like the, a master's class, right? So I started digging into this stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, this stuff ain't so bad, you know, because it wasn't a cool thing in high school. Mm -hmm. So I got a scholarship. It was Southwest Missouri State at the time. Now it's Missouri State. I got a scholarship for classical vocal performance to Missouri State. Um, went there. College was not the best thing. Did you graduate? For me? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, I went there about two years. Um, my parents were pretty mad at me because mm -hmm. I was wasting a lot of their money, which I can fully understand now. Right, um, <laughs> now that you're a dad yourself. But I, I mean, I literally called my parents and I said, I'm done with college. I'm, and Out. they were probably like, thank God. Mm. And I drove to Nashville and my, had a four-speed Hyundai Tiburon with Dale Earnhardt stickers on the back of it and, and no real plan. tree sticker, no plan. Where'd you, first job you land, what'd you do? Found myself at Tootsie's Orchid Lounge where my stepdad and my mother had known the owner. High connections there, yeah. And they, I just said, I just want to work. They had an Italian place at the time called Casa Bonas. The first day I worked in Nashville, the first week I moved there, I was passing out flyers for this Italian restaurant in a like a tuxedo up and down the streets of Broadway during fanfare. That sounds like a nightmare. It was. I mean, <laughs> but I had a job. And I eventually got promoted to a bouncer at Tootsie's. Um, not sure why, but saw a lot of crazy stuff there. That tough guy image. And then that... Um, morphed into a guy not showing up for a shift to me getting up to sing, uh, begging the owners to let me sing, and I sang, and then uh, next thing you know, I'm singing four nights a week for four hours a night from 10.30 to 2.30 in the morning. But it just wasn't getting me anywhere, and I was wanting to sing my own songs, not Dixieland Delight 14 times and Freebird 16 you times. And, yeah, moved back to Missouri to like the Ozarks, my aunt and uncle. Worked at a children's rehab facility, rehabilitation facility called Kalo, where I was like a recreational therapist. Mm. And we dealt with kids with affect disorder, trauma. Wow, um, how you did that work? And it was, that was in my second favorite job behind being Life an changing. artist. And then I got a call from Red Akins. Who you had made connections with while? Through the hunting Nashville. industry. I was dabbling at doing. So uh, that was through a whole nother aspect yeah, of your life. Yeah, just because wow. what I wanted to do was hunt for a living. And I didn't really know, I know how to do how that. To do that. I said, <laughs> so these are two things. I want to hunt for a living. Yeah, I want to be a singer sing for a living. And, two you know, things that stereotypical. people Stereotypical. Okay, yeah. I'm very stereotypical. But I know Red Akins called me and heard a demo, like an album I put together. And my whole family compiled a bunch of money together when I was 17. My stepdad got me with a producer in uh, Nashville. Um, at the studio that I now have done demos in post this tw 10, 12 song album that was supposed to land me the deal of a lifetime, but nothing ever happened from it. Until but got in the hands of Red Akins, he called me, he said, man, I'm, I dig what you do. Um, are you moving, plan on moving back to Nashville? Or what? I said, well, I can. I'll, well, how soon? I said, well, I got to put in my notice here and I'll be there in a month. And, and I moved in with a lady that I met through my stepdad that was playing with George Jones. She is now my booking agent and has been my booking agent. And I lived with her, I drove her damn crazy. <laughs> but I remember, Red Akins, I remember Red Akins coming into her garage, had a big old thing of Red Man in, spitting it in a solo cup and I played him some songs. And Luke Bryan was like six the next day, and Red had started this little group called the Peach Pickers Peach with Pickers. Ben Hayslip and Dallas Davidson, Dallas Davidson yeah. uh, two great friends of mine, and they wanted me to sing a demo. I said, I can sing it. Label got, got wind of that. And... Got wind of it. Jim Catino saw me singing at a National Wild Turkey Federation event. It was Porter Wagner's charity tournament at Opryland, and I was the guest singer because I had the hunting in with that. 
And Jim Catino was there and already had my CD, a little demo, Dallas and Rhett and the Peach mm -hmm. Pickers and Hayslip put together on his desk and already heard it. And I sang one of those songs that Jim Catino happened to be sitting out there, asked me to come hunting with him, and I had no clue he was ahead of Sony A&R. Yep. And through, then... Through hunting, your love of hunting, <laughs> now brought you to your love of country music. There We're going to talk more. Can you perform for us? we got some new music we're going to yeah, talk about when yeah. we come back. Stay with us a lot more here on The Record. Tyler Parr. That's a video for Rednecks Like Me. Happens to be the title cut of a brand new six song EP by our in-studio guest, Tyler Farr. This is on the record. Man, congratulations on this new project. By the way, you know, for people who may not know, you know, after you left your first record deal, you wound up doing a deal with Jason Aldean's record label, Night Train Records, a co-deal with another label. Talk about your, your friendship and relationship with, with Jason. I was pretty um, humbled and honored by that. Even Jason just wanted to do a deal because mm -hmm. how this started, some a lot of people don't know, is I was still with my previous record label. And I remember Jason just lived. I, I remember I could ride my side by side to his, his farm, mm -hmm. his house. And we was over there bowling, you know, because that's what you do when your mega country stars build a bowling alley. <laughs> Because uh, everybody has those, Yeah, because right? yeah. they do those in water parks. Uh, but I'm over there, we're born. We were playing poker, actually. And, and we'd had a few drinks, and he was like, man, why don't you let me put some stuff out on you? Why don't you let I'll start a label. I'll put some stuff out. I said, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of got a wits in with the, the label I was at, and it just wasn't working anymore. And... I told them I wanted out, and I called Jason. After, I left the meeting. I didn't tell them I wanted out yet. I left the meeting. I called Jason. I said, buddy, are you serious about this mm -hmm. deal? I'll just do it next week. And I was, it meant a lot to me. Yeah. And that's it. I don't know if he's just a really good friend or he really believes in me that much. I think maybe a little bit of both. Or maybe a little yeah. bit of both, and I'm, I'm fine with either. Yeah. This, uh, I heard you say with these six songs, this is the first time that you had a hand in writing all of the songs on your project. One of the songs, and I think it really a standout, because for those who may not know, you are the daddy of a beautiful two-year-old little girl, and she is adorable. I know you, you call her Hollis, right? But you call her Little Munchie? Is that what you call her? Hollis Caroline, yes. I call her uh, Little Munch, Little Munchie, Munchie. She uh -huh. has several nicknames, but that is the one thing I will brag on. Mm. I don't brag. Your lot, baby girl. But I will brag all day long about She's that. She's gorgeous. If you don't know, then you can go to my Instagram and you'll it's just pictures of like <sighs> turkeys I've shot and of my daughter. Could you play it for us? Oh sure. Love I'll try. Girl. Tyler Farr and questions. Daddy, why still smoking those cigarettes? Thought I heard you promise mama that you'd quit. What's so good it's in that bottle? Can't put it down. Why do all the monsters come round every time you go out? Can't look her in the eye. When I tell her daddies don't lie She's the only girl that's never given up on me How am I supposed to complain After everything she's seen What do I do? What do I say? When she starts asking questions someday Daddy, if you love Jesus, why you cuss his name? If you miss me so much, why you come home late? Will my tattoo on your arm ever wash away? When I grow up, can I 
be just like you someday. I can't look her in the eye when I tell her daddies don't lie. She's the only girl that's never given up on me. How am I supposed to complain after everything she's seen? What do I do? What do I say? She starts asking questions someday. She don't know I'm been holding it together. Starting tomorrow, gonna try to do a little better. I can't look her in the eye when I tell her daddies don't lie. She's the only girl that's never given up on me. How am I supposed to complain? After everything she seen, what do I do? What do I say? When she starts asking questions someday. Why do you come home late? That's, uh, is it hard to travel? Is it hard to leave knowing that she's home? And Oh, it's a, yeah, it's part of it. Um, but yeah, it breaks my heart. I mean, I was just gone for about a week in Germany um, over the 4th of July playing at military bases, and and she, she lost her crap whenever I came home, and I picked her up from daycare, and um, ain't nothing like it. But, I was say, yeah, it's... it's it's tough. And nothing like the love between a little, a little girl and her father, that's for sure. Such a great, great song. Questions one of the six on Red Lex, uh, Rednecks Like Me, of course, brand new project. Thank you so much for sharing the stories. Absolutely. Right? What's coming up for you this year, rest of the year, just out on the road? Uh, we're out with Lee Bryce this weekend, and uh, we are playing, 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 playing shows. Um, and just the new release of this EP. Um, Jason's pumped about it. I'm pumped about it. And we're just going to keep doing stuff on the farm and keep singing country music. That's so nice to have you here. <laughs> that's for sure. Thank you for all the music and, again, all the stories. Tyler Farr, everyone. And thank you guys for watching. This has been On the Record.